her. But that was getting into course two, and I wasn't sure, you know, everybody that was joining what what level we might all be at, and getting into that course two was a little more challenging poses. So I stuck with the 14th week, and we'll, we'll go from there. And sometimes I get a little off track of a list. My mind kind of just takes over, and we end up doing something slightly different. So. I hope it will all be good for everybody. I do like to start though seated just to bring our bodies from that outer world inward and to settle in. So taking this opportunity to settle in, maybe if you've been sitting for a little bit, change the cross of your legs. Move the flesh of the buttocks diagonally back so you can feel the sitting bones. And we want, again, we want enough height that you don't feel like you're rolling to the back of the pelvis and bending at, falling in at the waist, but you find those sitting bones, tent the fingertips to the floor or, you know, your blocks or bolster the height that you're on. Let's take a little bit more height. So that you can really lift the waist up off the hips. So sometimes I like the blocks at the side because often with the elbows bent, you can get that coiling of the back ribs a little bit more. You know, straight arms is also good, but I find that sometimes when I'm able to bend the elbows, um, I get the flesh in that back armpit coming around and able to open the armpit chest just a little bit more. You could tent the fingers. And just notice the difference between when you tent your fingers and lift up, when you press the palms down and lift up, really allow that inner leg to deflate down. Gently bring the chin towards the chest as you move the tailbone down. Lengthen the spinal muscles, anterior, posterior spinal muscles. Broaden the collarbones to the outer shoulders and roll from the front of your shoulder bone back. Move the outer shoulder blade in, the top of the shoulder blade down, the lower tips of your shoulder blades move into the body and really feel the lift from the lower abdomen up. Maintaining that length, not just to the sides, but to the back body, the front body. Lift the head, levelize the head, bring the hands to the top of the legs. Feel the weight even again on your sitting bones, the center of the sitting bone. If you feel like you're leaning a little bit forward, can you bring the front body back? You have to readjust internally. Feel that there's a string just gently lifting the crown of the head up. Let the shoulders release down. The eyes can gaze down to the floor, maybe a body's length in front. And as you gaze to the floor, let the corners of the eyes soften, the corners of the mouth, the back of the tongue. For the hinge of the jaw release. And over the next few breaths, you might slowly close the eyes if that feels right for you. If you prefer to keep the eyes open, just really allow the eyes to recede back. And gently let the abdomen expand away from the spine on the in-breath. And just slowly release back on the out-breath. That expansion, release any gripping and holding in and around your vital organs. A 
Relax around the diaphragm. Begin to feel the lungs loosen. So any hardness in the chest release. And feeling almost as if the brain was descending downward to the heart. So that we surrender our ego to the heart, letting the intelligence permeate through to each cell. Keeping the throat relaxed, let the chin release downward, can bring the hands to the heart. Use the thumbs just at the base of the sternum as if to lift the sternum from the base upward. As the head releases down, the eyes, whether they're open or closed, as if they're gazing into the heart. Let's take these few moments. Just to give thanks to the lineage of teachers who have passed down the teachings throughout the centuries to BKS Iyengar, his family, friends, and followers, and each of you for joining me this evening for this practice. From here, we'll begin with three ohms, and I will chant the invocation to Patanjali this evening. If you'd like to join me, please do. Let the back of the throat relax, the tongue and jaw release. Begin with a few silent ohms from within on your exhalation. Feel that internal vibration. Oh, oh. change the cross of the legs, readjust the sitting bones to so tuck the toes under there a little bit, deflating the top of the thighs, pressing down into either your bolster, the floor, or the blocks, again, to lift the waist up off the hips. 
Roll the shoulder bones back and really feel the flesh of the back armpit come around to the front. Really lifting up through the chest. You can bring the hands together, interlace the fingers, extend the palms forward. If you are working with any wrist shoulder issues, you can just keep the hands parallel. You don't have to raise the arms up, but if you're able to, inhale, stretching the arms up. Try and get to that pinky finger, even that snug webbing at the pinky. Move the elbows in, lift from the waist up, and as you bring the elbows in and lift up, lengthen from that inner arm upwards. Really feel that stretch through the sides, through the spine. If you find you get to a point, you kind of lift and then you're stuck there a little bit. Maybe you can, you know, move just a little bit to get the shoulder blades in even more. And then we'll bring the arms back down, change the interlace of the fingers, extend the palms forward. Inhale, reach the arms up. This is Parvatasana. Roll the thumbs up, the pinkies down. Again, the elbows move in, that skin muscle sucks into the bone, and then we want to stretch. So there's that difference between straightening the arm, so we want the arm to be straight, but then we want to feel the stretch. And then exhale, or release the arms. And then roll the shoulders. We'll extend the legs up to Dandasana. So let's take a few moments to just kind of warm up a little bit. Extend the legs, dandasana, which means staff pose. Lengthen evenly through the backs of the legs to the heels. From that big toe mound, spread to the little toe mound, as if you were trying to move the toe mounds as far away from each other, the pinky from the big toe mound as far apart as you can. Bringing the hands to the floor or blocks, bolster, you know, kind of the same height as the hips. So I'm pressing down, again, the elbows might be bent a little bit. Roll from that outer elbow back. Feel the shoulder blades move into the body, but also down. Lift up through the armpit chest. Levelize the head. Descend the sitting bones down. From here, we'll extend the arms out. So just all that work that we need to, you know, maintain that lift, that when you let go of the hands, that we don't just sink down, right? We're lifting, extending, turn the head, look to the right, and then back to center. Slowly as you exhale, look to the left, and then back, and then we'll roll from that inner upper arm out, reach the arms up parallel to each other, Urdhva Hastasana, sitting bones descend down, lift from the inner armpit up, and then exhale, we'll release, and come forward there a moment, just shake out the legs. Come off of any height you're sitting on, and we'll take maybe a blanket or towel, okay? If you don't have blankets, you could use towels or, you know, you can use a bolster, a pillow if you need. But I'm going to take the blanket lengthwise and an accordion fold. Okay? So blanket from this half fold, I'm making a tri-fold in the blanket. Okay? And we'll bring that along the mat. And then you might need a second blanket or possibly a chip foam block for the back of your head and neck. Okay. So we're going to use that to support the back of the head and neck. And then if you have either two small blocks or cork blocks or pillows, if you don't have the blocks, we'll use those to come into Sutta Bhada Konasana. Okay, so reclined bound angle pose. So in this pose, I'm sitting just in front of the blanket, hips on the floor, reclining back the spine along the blanket, using that second blanket or foam block behind the head and neck. So the blanket along the spine gives a little bit of lift 
some softness for the spinal muscles to release into, the vertebra to release into, and just that little bit of space for the shoulders to roll back, to roll towards the floor. The blocks that are at the outer hips, we can bring the soles of the feet together, use the blocks to wedge in at the outer thigh to come into Sukta Baddha Kanasana, which means reclined bound angle pose. And we often use a belt on the legs and hips. I'm just not going to do that tonight just because we're, we're going to adjust the legs a little bit. So just seeing that everybody is in this position now, we're reclining down along the mat on the blanket. Keep the knees bent, feet on the floor just to start. Really feel the back ribs move down into the blanket, the lower back lengthening away from the waist. Feel the sternum from the base of the sternum lifting up and again the collarbones opening to the outer shoulders. So from that upper tip of your shoulder blade, and you might kind of lift one side and then the other, move the shoulder blade into the body. Feel the lower tips of the shoulder blades move in. Then as you bring the soles of the feet together, the legs open out to the side, support the outer thigh with your bolster, or sorry, with your blocks or blankets, just something to give some support to the outer legs so that the inner leg can really release to your outer leg and bring a softness in the abdomen. So we're working right now to create some space in the pelvis and also some length to the side body. So if you're able to bring the arms up overhead and catch the elbows, lengthen through your sides even more. If that's not good on your shoulders, keep the arms at the sides and just try and create as much length through the side as you can, the side body. So if you can, arms coming up, catching the elbows, lengthening through the sides, feel the tailbone move towards the heels, the front diaphragm spreading to the side ribs, keeping the throat, the jaw, the eyes soft, Take a few breaths. Change the hold of the elbows. We take this opportunity to relax from the brain the eyes, the jaw, just areas that become very tight, the neck and upper back, and how that gripping kind of creates tension in around the lower abdomen. From here, we'll release the arms. As they come down to the sides, just keep the arms now in line with the shoulders. The shoulder blades move in, so we get some width to the front body, to the back body. And then as we bring the arms down to the outer legs, you can use your hands and bring the outer legs in. And just for a moment, stretch and extend through the backs of the legs to the heels. So we'll come into a variation of Supta, Tadasana, you can catch the sides of your mat and pull the mat, extend out through the heels, and just keep that feeling of the lower abdomen moving up and towards the spine. Then from there, just let the arms, the legs go. And then we'll roll the outer legs in, bend the knees, We'll roll to the right side off of our blanket towards the floor, press towards the floor to come up. 
We'll come up just to the hands and knees. So if you need to take one of the blankets that you are using to kneel on, if you need some, something softer under your knees, you can take a blanket under the knees. We'll bring the hands in front, untuck the toes. Feel that you're stretching through the tops of the feet, heel of the hand under the shoulder, and really spread the fingers. Okay. Try and create equal space between your fingers. Pressing through the shins, just begin to go a little bit back and forth. Feel the palms like suction cups, that they're suctioning and lifting up. And we go just a little bit back and forth, just to bring some movement to the hips, keeping the abdomen and diaphragm relaxed. This next time we'll come forward, tuck the toes under, and then as you move the hips back, we'll begin to lift the hips and press up into Adamukha Svanasana, into downward facing dog pose. From the center of the palm section up as you press down through the first knuckle and the fingers. Don't let all the weight just be on the heel of the hand, but press through the fingers, extend the fingers as you lift up, as if you were sliding the hands into long gloves and that was being pulled up towards your shoulders. Bend the knees again, lift the heels up off the floor, lift the hips higher, stretch the heels back and down, keep your front false ribs moving in. Let the toes lengthen forward. Sharply move that front ankle area back, the shin bone back. Lift the kneecaps up and press the top of your thigh bone back. Feel that stretch to the backs of the legs. And then we'll come back down to the hands and knees, untuck the toes, and we'll come up onto the shins. So that's all right so far for everyone. You can press through the shins, the tops of the feet. We'll roll the shoulder bones back, reach the arms up, catch the elbows. Just feel that new foundation here of kneeling, you know, that pressing through the tops of the feet to stretch the top of the foot. We can get really tight in the top of the, the feet and ankles. Move the tailbone down. So that tailbone almost just hooks just slightly. We tend to kind of fall into the back. Move the tailbone down, lift up through the sides. Change the hold of the elbows. And then extend the arms and we'll bring the arms down to the sides. You can tuck the toes under. We'll come back and see if we can from here come up to standing. We'll come to Tadasana to mouth pose. Just bring the feet about hip width apart. So we'll start with the feet just a little bit wider apart. And as we open the legs up just a little bit wider, you might even bring the toes in. Like I'm not saying bring the toes in a lot, but just a little bit to feel a spread in the back. And we're going to imagine we kind of have a something in our hand, a ball or something in the hand, and we're just going to roll forward and down and then inhale and come back up. Okay? It's almost like you have a little bit of a weight in your hand and just to balance yourself out. Okay? So as you inhale, lift up, as you exhale, you know, coming forward and inhale, rolling back up. And just repeating that a few times. You can bend the knees here a little bit, soften the abdomen, and then we'll come up and open the palms facing forward. 
Move that armpit, that skin of the armpit from the back to the front, palms facing forward, keeping the arms as straight as we can. We can straighten the arms. And then we'll bring the arms to the sides. So let the arms come down, but this, you know, flesh here, that muscle, that back armpit coming forward almost holds the arms. And I'm just gonna show from the back that if I come here, it almost, you know, moves the shoulder blades in and up and frees the neck. Not freezes it, but frees the neck, gives some support to the neck so that we don't feel any pinching in the neck. And then turn the palms to face in. So it's a little bit different than just, you know, arms at the sides. Okay? So just kind of go, shake out a little bit, go arms just to the sides. And there's nothing wrong with standing like that, Tadasana, but just that difference when we really feel the back being supported. So we can um, extend the arms, turn the palms up, bring the arms back a little bit. So we bring the arms back and down. Feel how that shoulder blade as it moves in, the shoulder bone rolls back, and then just turning the palms to face in. Some space for the neck so you don't feel that you're hanging in your, your neck. Activate the legs a little bit more. And then from here, we will extend the arms, bend the knees, and we'll just step the legs out. Okay, Utita Hasta Padasana, extend through the arms and legs. Turn the left foot and the right leg out, Parsva Hasta Padasana, Parsva to the side. And we're going to bend the front knee, Virabhadrasana two. Come back up, we'll turn the right foot in, left leg out. Bend the left knee. We'll come back up. Step the feet back to mountain pose. Okay, so now we're, we're spreading the legs. Taking now your blocks, we're going to go through now some standing poses from week 14 here. They're, the, they're really going through all the standing poses. So we'll see how far we get, but we'll begin with Utita Trikonasana, which is our extended triangle pose, the blocks or chairs. So you have to know for yourself if you need chairs for support, a wall behind you for support, okay? But we'll begin in our mountain pose, if you're able to feet together, legs together, roll the shoulders back, feel how that back armpit comes around to lift the front body, extend the arms, but relax the brain, the eyes, the throat, bending the knees, step or jump the legs out, cut the left foot in, the right leg out, Firm the back leg, lift the kneecaps up, engage your quadriceps, and extend through that right side and come up just a few times. Go a few times here. Extend through the side, extend through that side, and then bring the hand down to the chair, the floor, or block. Let your top arm just come to the hip and roll the top shoulder bone back. Eject the torso from the uh, the hips from the legs, through the firmness of the legs, eject that torso and roll the top shoulder back. Look up towards the ceiling, extend the top arm, Utita Trikonasana. Inhale, come up, turn the right foot in, left leg out. You have to really rotate from the top of the thigh bone. Lift the kneecaps, you need to clear that flesh at the top of your knee. There's, it's not just sucking the quadricep to the bone. We have to lift it up, and that gives space for that kneecap to move in and up. From that firmness of the legs, we're reaching, ejecting, like that sternum is being pulled, 
And as we lengthen, then the hand coming down to the floor or block. Top hand can be on the hip. Roll the top shoulder back. Elongate through the side body evenly. Think of that Supta Baddha Konasana, that reclined pose we did with the blankets. We were finding that length even through the sides. The abdomen remained relaxed. Lift the chest up towards the sky, the heart up towards the sky. Extend the top arm up. Really move that front buttock in. Press through the feet, inhale, come up. We'll turn the right foot in, left foot in, sorry. Heel toe in, step or jump back to Tadasana, mountain pose. Good. We'll come into Uttita Parsva Konasana, side angle pose. Inhale, extend the arms, bend the knees, step or jump out. Can you spread the feet any amount further, but keep that connection that you're not just rolling to the outer ankles, Move those outer ankles in, lift the inner arches up. As you lift the quadriceps up, also feel those front hip bones lift up, the side waist all lift up. Left foot turns in, right leg cuts out. Bend the front knee, move your front sitting bone towards your front heel, keeping the right shin bone perpendicular to the floor. So as we keep the right shin perpendicular to the floor, you're trying to move that front sitting bone towards the heel. At the same time, resist your back inner thigh out. Open those groins. Elongate through the side, so you might bring your forearm to the thigh if you need. But if you can, extend through the sides, extend through the side, and bring the hand down to the floor or block. Top hand to the hip. Roll that top shoulder bone back. Lengthen again through the sides, body equally. Keep the sides of the torso parallel. Not dropping in on one side and rounding more on that upper side. Lengthen. Looking up, maybe bring the top arm up and over the ear. Press through the feet, inhale and come up. Cut the left foot in. The right foot in the left leg out. Really feel that spread through the legs. The standing poses are going to give us that strength, right? They strengthen not just the legs, but they help us strengthen the spine and feel the brain relax as we bend the front knee. Relax the brain, the eyes, the throat. Don't tense there. Move your inner knee out, the front buttock under. The sitting bone moving to the heel as you plug the thigh bone in, reaching either forearm to the thigh or reaching, really extending and bringing the hand down to the floor or block. Top hand can be on the hip and revolve from that lower waist, lower ribs up. Push your front knee into the arm as the arm resists. See how that moves that front hip under even more. Front sitting bone towards the heel. Try not to grip with the toes. Okay. Lengthen the toes. Top arm may be stretching up and over the ear. Inhale to come up. We'll turn that front foot in, left foot in. Toe in, step or jump back to mountain pose. Okay. So next we're going to turn this into Pravrita Trikonasana, and then we'll combine that with Pravrita Parsvakonasana. So revolved triangle pose to revolved side angle pose. So the revolved action, just so you know, I'm not sure if everyone knows this pose. So it's bringing opposite hand to foot, okay? So in that full pose, if we can, the hand comes to the outer foot. And in the revolved side angle pose, the elbow to the outer knee. And we can stretch the top arm up and over. 
So if you're not sure for your balance, for your body, you could have a chair, okay? So you could have the opposite hand to the chair, the forearm on the chair. You know, the chair might do a little bit more stability if you're not sure, okay? For balance, for any, you know, back, shoulder, hip kind of issues, take the chair, okay? For those that are going to try with the blocks or we're going to bring both blocks to the right side. Because sometimes bringing the hand to the inner foot, then you have the option to kind of hop that hand over to the outer foot if you're able to, okay? Let's try Pravita Trikonasana, turning it into a side angle pose after, revolve side angle pose. So from Tadasana, Right, let the back body lift and open the heart. Let the face recede back. You know, a mountain isn't worrying about all that's going on around it. it just stays that stable, strong state from within. Feel that steadiness come from within. And inhale, extend the arms, bending the knees, step or jump the feet out. Cut the left foot in a, a lot, like 45 degrees or so, right leg out 90 degrees. Arms, Vimanasana airplane arms, stay out in line with the shoulder. Lift up through that front kneecap, lift up through the front body. Let's even extend the arms up by the ears. Then from here, we're going to begin to turn so that left arm coming forward, right hand back, you can bring it to the hip. And as we stretch from the waist, from the hip, stretch that left arm, bring it down to the block, to the inner foot or the chair. Outer hips, hug those outer hips in. Feel the softness in the abdomen as you hug the outer hips in. The organs move back to the spine. Revolve from the left waist to the right. And if you feel you can, bring the left hand to the outer right foot. If you feel you can go lower down on your block or even bring the hand to the floor. The outer hips move in, eject the torso from the hips, tailbone moving back, roll your right shoulder bone back, extend the top arm up, Karita Trikonasana. From here, if you can maintain this twisting, start to bend your front knee. Now you might find you need to raise the hand a little bit higher but in one class in India with Gita, she talked of that front knee you know, coming through, not even touching the left arm. So you're bending that knee, trying to move the knee forward, pressing the palm down. Parita Parsvokanasana, so your side angle pose. Front knee bends, sitting bone towards the heel. And then press the knee into the arm, the arm resisting, top arm could come up and over the ear. And then we'll inhale and come back up. And stay for just a few breaths. Step or jump the feet back to mountain pose. Okay. We'll repeat that to the other side. So those revolve poses can really warm you up, okay? You can feel that heat building. You can think of it as our tapas, our you know, inner fire. Sometimes just sweating things out can release, remove impurities, but it's also that you know, inner fire that 
propels us to continue on this path, invigorates us, but let the brain relax. Just really watch that the brain isn't kind of hitting the head, that you don't feel any tension. Relax the brain, the throat, you can step or jump the feet out. Turn the right foot in, left leg out. We're starting in that um, airplane. Reach the arms up. Tailbone moving down, front hip bones lift up. Really activate that back hamstring. Okay? Back hamstring, as if you were trying to lean back onto your back leg. Your back leg like a pole. Okay? Leaning back, stretch. Through the firmness of the legs, the outer hips begin to bring the right hand forward, left hand back, and can come down to the block or chair. Left hand to the hip. So you have the opposite hand and foot coming forward. The hips moving in and moving back. Maintain the length to the sides. Begin to revolve from the right waist, the right ribs, to the left. If you feel stable and balanced, you can bring your left hand, sorry, your right hand to the left outer foot. And the hand coming down, the arm to that leg, that fulcrum point, allows you to turn a little bit more. Move your bottom shoulder blade in to turn. Move that bottom shoulder blade in. Keep the outer hips moving in. Elongate the spine, that interior spine, and then maybe stretch the top arm up. Try not to grip with the toes, right? The feet press down, the inner arches lift up. And then you really need that bottom armpit Back of the armpit to go in. That's it, it goes in. And then try to bend the front knee. Let that front knee bend. Utita Parzo or Pravrita Parzo Kanasana. Allow the twisting not to tighten the organs, but to release. Remove any hardness. Soften the abdomen. Top arm maybe can stretch up and over the ear. And then we'll inhale. Slowly come back up. Heel twin, step or jump back to Tadasana. To mountain pose. Stay just a few breaths in mountain pose. So next we're going to tie the three warrior poses together, okay? So you might want your blocks or chair back on that right side, okay? And I'll just demonstrate quickly what we will do. I'm going to start just at the back end of my mat, just so that I have uh, the space. So I'll just show you here quickly first. We'll come first. Virabhadrasana two, and then I'm gonna turn the back foot in. We'll sweep the arms to come up to Virabhadrasana one. Lifting up, so almost same action as we did earlier, but we'll have that front knee bent. Lifting up, moving those front ribs in, the abdomen moving in and up, coming forward. Step the back foot in and come up, Virabhadrasana three, and you might bring your hands down to the blocks or the chair, okay? This is too intense on the neck and shoulders. You can have the hands to the blocks. We'll step back, warrior one, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I'll we'll tie those three together. So if you have lots of space, you can start middle of your mat. I'm gonna start at the left side of my mat. Step or jump the feet apart. Left foot in, the right leg out 90 degrees. 
Bending the front knee, the front sitting bone, go to post towards that front heel. Roll the inner thighs away from each other. Virabhadrasana two. Look to the front hand. Feel though the eyes recede back, as if that back brain was being just pulled back. Our back brain releasing down. Virabhadrasana two. Then we'll turn the back foot in, roll from that back inner thigh around, sweep the arms up, or your hands can stay at your hips. Hands can stay at the hips also. We have a dress in the one. Firm that back hamstring, tighten it, lift the top of the back hamstring to the sitting bone. Lift the back kneecap up, press the thigh bone back. Soften the abdomen as you come forward, step the back foot in, and then as you lift the back leg, straighten the front leg, the arms go forward, eject the torso from the hips as that back foot stretches back. You can bring the hands to the blocks or chair if you need. Move the front ribs in and feel like the torso, that top leg, it's floating on the top of a lake. We'll step that back foot back. There, Bhadrasana one. Straighten the front leg. We'll come around. Step or jump back to Tadasana, to mountain pose. And then we'll repeat that to the other side. So the warrior poses can be, you know, quite strong poses. If you feel you need to, you keep the hands at the hips or on the blocks of the chair. You don't overdo it in the neck and shoulders or feel that you're straining too much in these poses. Okay. The brain becomes hard, you know, that hardens other areas of the body. So really pay attention to the difference between what you can do and what we should be doing for ourselves. So we can step or jump the feet apart. Extend the arms. Turn the right foot in, left leg out. So when we're using these props like the blocks, the chair, you know, Mr. Anger, you know, he didn't obviously create chairs and blocks, but the idea of these props weren't always to make things easier, but just more accessible when needed. So we bend the front knee, that front sitting bone going to the front heel. You can imagine a chair there um, for that front hip to sit down on. And if we were resting on that chair, that's the feeling in the brain we want when we sit down in that chair. From your Drasana two, we'll kind of sweep the arms, Vimanasana arms, those airplane arms. I know you have to adjust a little bit that back foot. Be careful. We turn, kind of pivot on the toes, the back heel out. It keeps a nice wide stance. And Virabhadrasana one does have a fairly wide stance. It might feel wider than what you normally have been doing. But see if you can stay with that stance. Maybe the arms coming up by the ears. And it's not just the arms reaching up. Lift from that lower abdomen. Lift through the sides. Reaching up, not just from the shoulder, but from the side body. Engage that back hamstring. We come forward here. We step the back foot in. Extending the straight left standing leg. The arms reaching forward, the top foot back, as if again you were floating on the top of a lake. If you need to, of course, the hands to the chair or blocks, especially if you're working with any neck, upper back issues. We'll step back, warrior one. Straighten the front leg, turn to come back, step or jump back to Tadasana, 
to mountain pose. Good. And stay a few breaths. Okay. From here, we'll bring the blocks in front. We're going to turn um, our Prasarta Padottanasana concave back into Parsvottanasana. So that's a wide leg forward bend into kind of a side forward bend. Okay? So from the center of our mat, you can extend the arms, step or jump out, bring the hands to the hips, and see if you can spread the legs a little bit wider. So that you have to use those hamstrings at the back. We kind of come loose here. Lift from the back hamstring, and as you lift the quadricep up and suck that muscle up and back, the front of your thigh bones move back. Lift up through the front hips. The thumbs kind of move the flesh of the upper buttock down. And keep the hamstring working. Lift up through the front body, even maybe look up, roll the shoulder bones back. Try and bring the elbows back behind as if you're going to touch the elbows. Soft through the throat as you come forward, as if the sternum is being pulled forward. Maybe pause here, concave back, parallel to the floor. As if again you're floating on the top of the water. Keep trying to move those elbows closer together. And then we'll bring the hands down to the floor or blocks. Try not to sink the hips behind the heels. You might need to slightly bend the knees, press the feet down, the four points of the feet, inner outer heel, big and little toe mount, let the toes lengthen, straighten the legs as much as you can. And again, let the torso lengthen forward. So you kind of pull the heel of the hands back as the torso goes forward, See that the hips feel like they're still being moved back in line with the heels. From here, we're going to turn the left foot in, start to walk the hands with your blocks to the right, turn the right leg out, and staying down fairly low, come into Parsvatanasana. So we stay down low and kind of sweep the body down low. You might be able to bring the hands to the floor. The left side ribs revolve to the right. So we're moving to get the forehead to the shin, but not at the expense of your back, your hips. Okay? So firm the legs, outer hips move in. That lower abdomen scoops towards the spine and you cascade down over that front leg. Let the jaw soften, the throat relax. Lift the back kneecap and press that back thigh bone back. And then slowly inhale, come up to a half, an Ardha Parsvatanasana. Staying down a little bit low, we'll come back through that center for Sarta Padottanasana. So see if you can stay down low here. As we walk over to the left, so the right foot starts to turn in, the left leg turns out. Keep that softness in the abdomen as we move from the right to the left. Just feel how gravity just creates some space between the vertebra. The outer hips still move in and as if they're being pulled back. So bring more weight to your back leg, your back foot. Don't let all the weight come onto your front leg. 
Take some of that weight back as you cascade down over the front leg. So I kind of almost imagine there's, you know, like a, a gear in the outer hips and they're being rolled back or a fishing rod, you know, the reel and they're being reeled back. And then just slowly after the next exhalation, inhale, kind of a half Parsvottanasana. Start to walk back to the front. So you have to kind of turn the feet back forward. Again, stay down fairly low, okay? Fairly low here. See if you could begin to bring the crown of the head towards the floor now. So for some, you might need the block and rest your head on your block. Maybe you need two blocks to rest the crown of the head. For those that can go a little bit lower down, you're letting the body hang down evenly between the right and left leg. Don't feel that one leg is working more than the other. Let those Side body lengthen as the crown of the head moves down towards the floor. If you can, keep the fingers in line with the toes, walk the hands back, keeping the outer shoulder, elbow, wrist in line. So even though we want the sitting bones to feel they're lifting up, just be mindful of your hamstrings. You have to really feel that top of the hamstrings lifting up to the sitting bone, quadriceps lifting and sucking in in the thigh bone back. As the thigh bone goes back, the sitting bones lift up. Think of a bridge from the one outer foot to the other. The fulcrum are kind of at that sacral area kind of draping down from the sacrum to the outer feet and the torso hanging down. Vertebra by vertebra, just creating some length. Keep the throat soft as if the contents of the front throat were moving back. After the next exhalation, inhale and slowly start to come up. Pause at that half kind of concave back spot just for a breath or two. Heel toe the feet in a little bit. Raise your blocks up and then bring kind of heel toe the feet in more so we're in Ardha Uttanasana, the feet hip width apart. Move the dorsal spine in to so really feel as if someone's come, you know, to your back ribs and are using the thumbs to move those back ribs in and not poke the front ribs forward. So those front lid ribs have to lift up as the back ribs move in. Move the skin of the upper back away from the neck. Bring the weight a little bit too, more to the heels as we bend the knees coming up through Ukutasana. And then inhale, we'll extend to come up and back to Mountain Pose, Tadasana. Good. We'll stay a few breaths here. Let's bring the blocks to the back of your mat. And again, you can be using the chair. If, you go, if you've been using the chair, bring it to that right side. We're going to try to come into now without a lot of 
pre thought. <laughs> Ardha Chandrasana. We're going to take half moon pose. So don't even really think about it. Extend the arms, bend the knees, step or jump out. Turn the left foot and the right leg out. Bend the front knee as we bring that right hand down to the floor or block. Step the back foot in, the right hand forward. Simultaneously straighten the standing leg as you lift the left leg up. Come back down, come up, turn that right foot in. We're going to repeat that. Just know that your body knows what to do. Try not to overthink it. Keep that brain, the eyes relaxed. Extend the arms, left foot and right leg out. Then the front knee, right hand coming down. Left hand to the hip, step the back foot in. Right hand forward. Begin to lift the left leg. Come up and down a few times. Lift the left leg, kind of touch and lift up, touch and lift up. And then extend and hold. Ardha Chandrasana. Maybe you can extend the top arm. Lengthen through the side as that front hip rolls back. Feel like someone's pulling your top heel. And then exhale, we'll come down. And back to the front. Let's step back to Tadasana. Stay for a breath. And again, without thinking, let the brain release. Your body knows that intelligence is in the cells. Extend the arms, bend the knees, step or jump out. So even though that's a pose we haven't done tonight, let right foot in, left leg out. We have those movements there. Bend the front knee, hand to the floor, block. Right foot in, block forward, lift up. Step back down, come up just for a moment. Come back to the front and then we'll repeat that. Okay? So we bring that fluidity into the body, that movement. So now we can repeat left foot out, bend the knee, hand coming down, step in, left hand forward, and just lift up and down a few times. Keep that right leg straight, touch, touch, and then lift and hold, lift, hold, elongate. Maybe the top arm up. Feel like that star stretching and opening. The graceful ice skater gliding on that skate blade. And then we'll slowly come down. Straighten the front leg, turn the left foot in. Step back to Tadasana, to Mountain Pose. We'll come into Uttanasana. This will be our last standing pose before we come down to the floor. We'll bring the blocks in front of Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Okay. I'm going to actually show from the side. So in our standing forward bend, if we reach up, right? Again, it's not just reach the arms here. We want to reach up, shoulder blades in, from that back arm, coming in, Extending up. Exhale, we come forward. Ardha Uttanasana. If that's where you need to be, blocks or chair, or maybe you can reach up, coming down, hands to the floor. Maybe by the outer feet. Don't just get the fingers to the floor and get caught here in the back. We have to bring those back ribs in. Okay, we can't just be stuck here. You know, I can go down, but there's no movement here. We have to bring that movement in. So sometimes it's better to stay up a little bit higher to get that upper back moving and then come down. Okay, so we'll go through that 
Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, bend the knees if you need. Hands can stop at the chair or blocks. Come into Uttanasana. Sitting bones lift up and separate slightly. Top part of the outer hips lift up. Feel like you're being lifted up so that your torso can cascade down. And if you feel caught in that upper back, use some support. Soften the abdomen. Bend the knees a little bit if you need. If you feel a lot of the hamstring or in your back, bend your knees a little bit and soften the abdomen. And then sometimes you can straighten the legs again after. So even though we're cascading down, try not to let too much that skin of your upper back slide towards your neck. We want the skin of the upper back to actually move away from the neck. So that's where the action of the hands pressing into the floor or blocks come in. We could just dangle our arms, but we want to use those organs of action to help create space in the neck, the upper back. So either pressing the fingertips or the palms, trying to move the skin of the upper back, the muscle of the upper back away from the neck. The head hangs down, let's say like a, a ripe fruit. From your Uttanasana, your forward bend, you might need to adjust depending on what props you're using. We're going to come into our Adha Svanasana, so downward facing dog pose. So if you're with the chair, you might just stay with the hands on the chair and step back, kind of your Adha Svanasana. Otherwise, hands to the floor, you can step the feet back, downward facing dog pose. From here, we'll come to the hands and knees. So if you're at the chair, you know, just use that to slowly come down. Untuck the toes. Just as we had started, you kind of go back and forth a few times here. Let some softness come in the abdomen. And then as we come forward, you can keep the shins down on the floor, lower down onto your abdomen. Roll from that back inner thigh to the front. So you can even deflate kind of the top of the thigh. Might lift the right leg and then the left. Bring the hands kind of just by those front armpit area. Keep the fingers spread. Move the tailbone down, your front hips forward. And press into the floor. You the spine and just lift up a little bit. Little Bhujangasana, little Cobra pose. And then release back down. As you release back down, keep those front floating ribs moving in. You don't want to harden the diaphragm. Now slide the hands forward. Kind of just, just a little bit forward. So this time as we press down and lift up, we get to straighten the arms almost and coil the back ribs, lift the sternum. Exhale, slowly release down. So I want you to gauge for yourself what might be best for your back so, and your neck. So for some people, you might just stay here more lengthening and you have the elbows on the floor, feel more lengthening from the tailbone. So as the tailbone goes down, feel that length and you might just come up a little bit. Some might come up a little bit more. 
And those that can lift up more, you can legs together, bring the hands in closer, press and lift up, really coil those back ribs. Okay, so you have to go for your back, what will be best for you, okay? So be mindful of that. So you might kind of support yourself with the forearms to get that lift, Bhujangasana. Those that can lift up a little bit may want the arms a bit further forward. And then those that can lift up more, bring the hands in closer to that armpit, lifting up cobra pose. From the base of the spine, lift up the anterior spinal muscles. Lift the sternum. And then exhale or release down. Fold the forearms, rest the forehead. Let the toes come in, the heels out. Feel the back of the skull move away from the neck. And again, really see that those front ribs don't poke into the floor. You're more on your sternum bone than on the false ribs. Turn the head to the right. And then to the left. Let's go back to the right. And then to the left, just briefly bring the head back centered. And then we'll bring the arms in, we press to come up, and then walk the knees forward. So this is a one way. If you're able to, you cross the shins and you come through, okay? If that's not good on your knees or ankles, then you might need to sweep the legs, you know, to the side and bring the legs forward, okay? So you have to decide what's better for you if you can. We kind of roll on the shins and then we'll extend the legs. We'll come to Dandasana, staff pose. Lift up through the chest, bend the knees, bring the feet to the floor, hold the back of the legs. Move again the spine in, the back ribs in, lift the chest. Try not to be holding by your neck, okay? The head, it's as if it's just placed on top of the neck. We're not here straining, hardening. Just let the head be centered. Let's extend the right leg, left arm. So I'm holding the right leg, right leg, left arm. And then down and then hold the left leg, extend opposite arm to leg. So this is really just a variation of Parapuna Navasana. Come back, or we'll repeat that, opposite arm to leg, opposite arm to leg. And then for those that feel they might be able to, and you extend both legs and maybe both arms. And then we'll lower down Dandasana. Cross the shins, twist just gently to the right. So we can look over the back shoulder. And slowly come back and we'll turn the opposite way. And then as we come back, change the cross of the shins. And you might want your blocks or chair or bolster here in front, just a little bit of height so that as you stretch forward. If you feel it puts a lot of strain to bring the hands down to the floor, use some height. 
Do you feel like you're really, you know, sinking back in that pelvis? Add a blanket or a foam block. You can add something to sit on and then come forward. We want to feel like we're coming forward from the top of the thighs, not from the waist. Okay? Top of the thighs coming forward. So I'm sitting on a blanket and I have my hands on blocks. Again, if you're a bit tighter or working neck shoulder issues, you might need the height and then the chair there. And you may not come as far forward. You might need the chair for some support, but it's softening the groin, softening the abdomen, releasing some strain in the back. We inhale and come up, then we'll go a little bit over to one side. So I brought my right hand to the outer hip and the left arm diagonally across. Just to get a little bit of a diagonal twist here. Feel that release in maybe the mid upper back, the side body. And again, that lengthening in the lumbar area. And then inhale and come up and then over to the opposite side. And then we'll slowly come back up. We'll extend the legs back, Dandasana, staff pose. From here, catch the right inner leg and just bring that out to the side. We won't come into the full Janu Shushasana and just get that movement of the leg out. Use your blocks or chair and just come forward more with a concave back. Just to soften the abdomen, get that space in the abdomen, relax the jaw, the throat. So as you elongate the interior spinal muscles, roll the right leg um, out, you might need some support for the outer knee. Soften the front throat and bring the chin down towards the chest. See if you can lengthen the duration of your inhalation and exhalation. And then we'll slowly come back up. We'll bring that outer right leg again. And then we'll bend left knee up and out. And again, you might need to adjust the height you're on. If you're feeling a lot of strain in that knee or hip, you use a blanket, another blanket or block to support the outer leg, the outer knee if needed. And again, we're just more getting that lift up to the armpit, clearing the armpit area, the front abdomen moving back and up. The collarbones broadening to the outer shoulders. Left inner leg to release to the outer leg, so soft to the groin. There's a lift that and to the back body, not to strain, but to really feel those kidneys move in and up. The shoulder blades in and down. The front floating ribs move in. And keeping the front throat soft as if you were holding 
you know, a little bit of a rolled washcloth at the throat, bring the chin down. And then we'll slowly inhale and come up. And then we'll bring the outer leg in and just stack to Dandasana. From here, come off of any height you're sitting on. Keep um, a couple of blankets nearby, just in case you feel cool or want a, a bit of a blanket behind your head. And if you have a bolster, we'll use the bolster for a moment. Or if you don't have a bolster, a block will be fine. Just very slowly come down onto your mat. Keep the knees bent, the back of the head come to the floor. Taking the bolster, we can slide the bolster between the back of the legs and the heels. And then just for a minute or two before we come down into Shavasana, I want you to lift the hips up and slide the block or bolster just under the sacrum. So it's a really you know, gentle bridge pose. You can feel that flush from the back armpit coming around, the armpit area open, the arms press down to roll even more to your outer shoulders. You might find you want to lift and lower the hips just a few times to get that length to the sides, the softness in the abdomen. And you can either keep the knees bent, feet on the floor, or you might want to press up to the heels and straighten the legs. The tailbone going towards the heels. When you straighten the legs, your bolster should kind of fall into your back. Keep the sacrum supported, tailbone towards the heels, the lower abdomen moving up towards the sternum. So that as we find the tailbone pulling to the heels, the front body lifts up. So that opposite action So you want the legs straight, they're active a little bit, but you're not creating any hardness in the abdomen or diaphragm, in the face or throat. I'm gonna feel the outer hip move in and lengthen down to the outer foot, outer hip to outer foot, inner thigh to inner ankle. Open the bottoms of the feet. Almost as if the bottoms of the feet were breathing. And after the next exhalation, we'll bend the knees, bring the feet back to the floor. Press down through the feet, the shoulders, the upper arms, the length of the arms if you want, and just lift the hips up and hold. You can slide the bolster towards the heels and then slowly lower back down so that the back is on the floor. You might now want to take that little bit of blanket. It does not have a big fold in it, just a, you know, a bit of blanket behind the head and neck so it's a bit softer. You may want to take another blanket just to bring to the abdomen the top of the legs and then extend the legs, let the back of the legs rest on your bolster. 
As you stretch through the back of the right leg to the heel, the left leg to the heel, and let the toes kind of fall out to the sides, the pinky toe moving closer to the floor. Cut the shoulder blades in. Feel the skin of the back spread. The front body broaden. So you feel not just a vertical lengthening, but a horizontal spread. You can keep the eyes open for a few breaths. And then slowly, just gently let the eyelids close. The top eyelid moving down to the bottom, the bottom eyelid moving to the top. Begin to soften the corners of the eyes, the corners of the mouth, the throat. You might take a few deeper exhalations. Not hard exhalations, just a little bit longer out breath. So that you feel from the brain all the way down to the feet. That release the brain down to the palms. So that we let go the feet and ankles. The palms, fingers, wrists, the knees, elbows, hips, and shoulders. So now we just let those organs of action release. Let the arms and legs just be supported. Senses of perception and begin to draw inward. The eyes, the ears, the tongue. Mr. Anger in Light on Life, you know, we even say that each cell, like a pore of the skin, looking inward. So the eyes gaze inward. Let the awareness be on your breath. It's smooth, even inhalation. That soft, even exhalation. Feel how the breath brings each cell to life, vitality.
Just letting the body release a few breaths longer. When you feel ready, you can begin to bring some movement to the hands and feet. And slowly into the arms and legs, the hips and back. But you can bend the knees one by one, the elbows. And if you feel you'd like to, you can hug the knees towards the chest. And maybe roll just a little bit from one side to the other. And just slowly we can make our way up to sitting. Take a little bit of support if you need when you come to sitting. Really feel the crown of the head ascend, the sitting bones descend, and that the you get anterior and posterior spinal muscles are lengthening evenly and running parallel to each other. The base of the sternum lifting up so that the shoulder bones can roll back. Let that bring freedom not just to the lungs, but to the upper back and neck. The eyes can gaze down or be closed. And keep the jaw relaxed, the throat relaxed. And staying with your breath, 